Hello and welcome to our tutorials on using the Alice programming tool. In this video, we will walk you through an example using some functions, variables, and parameters. Let's quickly refresh ourselves on what the three of them are. A function is something that gives back some information to you. A variable is a placeholder for some information that may change over time. A parameter is a placeholder for some information you are going to give a method. So let's get straight to it and take a look at functions. Now there are two places in Alice to get to functions. The first one is from your objects. Every object has the same set of functions that will give you information. They are separated into groups for proximity, size, spatial relation, and so forth. The second set is in the world object. It has a totally separate set of functions which are very different from the rest of the objects. We can see ones that compare things. Please pause the video to see further explanations of what they mean. Most of them are fairly obvious. Some like Boolean logic are somewhat tricky to understand, but don't worry about that right now. One last thing to quickly explain is a string. In programming, we call things that we want to write strings. So the word hello is a string. So is the letter Z, or the sentence, I would like candy. To put it very simply, pretty much anything that you're not planning to do math on is a string. A number can be a string, so long as you're just planning to use it for writing something like 12 buffalo, 2 raccoons, and a salmon. Okay, let's use a function in Alice. In this scene, we have a buffalo and a man. He must be from the plains a couple hundred years ago. Let's get him to move to the buffalo. We can use trial and error, or use a dummy object to get the distance, or we can use a function. What information do we want the function to give us? The distance from the man to the buffalo. You'll notice if we tried to just drop a function straight into the instruction box, it is highlighted red. You cannot do that. It needs to be used as part of a method. So start with what you want to do, which is move the man to the buffalo. Let's pick the method that does that. Pick any distance you want, maybe one meter and then the buffalo. We can now put the function aboriginal man distance to in place of the distance we put in. Notice the function turns green. What is happening in this instruction is the function runs off, gets its tape measure and measures the distance and plops in the amount for you. Remember that a function is giving you something. In this case, the distance from the buffalo to the man. So let's run it and see what happens. He went the exact distance from his center point to the buffalo's center point. If we then move the man two meters away and make a copy of the same instruction with the function in it, even though we are a different distance, the function will still run off again, get its tape measure out, and find the distance and return it to you. So let's see how that looks. Excellent. Let's do something else. Let's get him to tell us how wide he is and how tall he is added together. There are a couple ways to do this, but we'll do it by making our own function. Go to the man's function page and pick create new function. Name it width and height. Click OK and a new green window will open. By default, it will say return one. That is because a function must return something. That is, after all, the job of a function, to give you information. So let's drag in the man's width function and press the little arrow at the end and pick math and then the plus sign and put in a number. Go to the height function and drag it in and place it over the number. That's it. When you use that, it will say the total of the two of them together. So let's get him to say it. Pick his say method and drag the function in. Just a second, why is it red? Remember that stuff about strings? Well, here's what we meant. The number returned to us was used like a number. We did math with it and we measured things to get it. It is not a string, so we have to turn it into a string. 
So put a default string in the same method, maybe hello, and go back to the world functions and find the what as a string function. Drag that in in place of hello. Put buffalo as the default. Now when we put our function in, it turns green and it will tell us the total. Let's see how that looks. Excellent. Still with me? Good. Let's get the man to hunt the buffalo. We've created a couple of methods, stab spear and setup. Setup takes a bunch of instructions that we need to do before we start the scene and puts them into a single method to keep our code neat and tidy. Here's the code for the stab spear method. Feel free to pause the video to get a better look. First, we get him to walk over to the buffalo. We've done this one before. Put in a default number and replace it with the function for distance to the buffalo. Let's see how that looks. The man walks too close to the buffalo, so let's amend the function by putting minus 2 on the end of it, so he ends up 2 meters from the buffalo. Right, so now we get him to stab the buffalo. I would like to think that in real life a buffalo would put up a bit more of a fight, but this buffalo is pretty tame. So let's make a method for him falling over, which will take a parameter so that the user can enter his dying words. Notice that at this point, the method is orange on the method tab. To add a parameter, we click the create new parameter button in the method box and name it. And we need to say what kind of parameter we want. Number is obvious, strings is words, and the other one you may use at some point is boolean. Boolean is just a mathy way of saying true or false. We'll use it in an example in a later tutorial using the if-else block, so don't worry about that right now. However, we want the buffalo to say something, so pick string. Notice that in the method tab, the method now has a yellow section with our parameter in it. Now we want to get him to fall over. Roll him right a quarter of a revolution, and then get him to move down 0 0.75 meters, and do them together. Now go back to world my first method and add the fallover method in and choose none. Press play to see what happens. Oops! Remember that down is now the buffalo's right because he rolled over. So switch it to right. Let's see how that looks. Good. Now we want the buffalo to say his dying words. So we pick the buffalo say method and drag in our parameter. That's it. The method is done. Look in the world functions and in there you'll find the ask user for a string function. Drag that into our method and enter a direction to prompt the user to do something. We'll ask them to enter my dying words. There you go, you are finished. Watch what happens now. Let's run through one more time what happened. The parameter in our fallover method is just a placeholder. By being there, it tells us that for the method to work, it needs some information from someone or something. Think of the parameter as an empty box with a label dying words and an instruction with it that it needs a string. By itself, it does nothing. It needs something added to it to become useful. The function ask user for a string, is getting information. This time, instead of getting a measuring tape and finding a distance, it comes to us and gets us to type something in. It then puts our input into the empty box, which is then given to the method. 
the method takes the box and looks at the name on it and finds the correct place to put the contents by matching the name on the box with the same name somewhere in its methods, which is here. It then puts the information it got from the function into that spot to be used when it runs. Hopefully this is starting to become a bit clear. If not, watch the tutorial again and be patient. It will eventually make sense. But understand that almost everyone, including me, struggled with these ideas at first. In the next tutorial, we will use some more functions and parameters as well as a variable. Until next time, thanks for watching.